Paris, it's nice to see you again. Thanks for joining me today. It's my pleasure, Ken. How are you? I'm pretty good. And I really think this espresso fits nice with our interesting topic. Are we done with diagnosis now? Can we go on to better topics? Uh, not yet, not yet. Certainly not yet. But if you want to find all problematic areas. But if you want, we can stop at this stage, no problem. No, no, we don't need to look any further. Actually, there is something I have to notice, and maybe we should discuss it. Yeah, of course. I'm all ears. Please go. Okay, so the check mark theory. This theory says if a check mark, if it has a check mark, everything's okay. <laughs> that, that's one is legendary. Excellent. I like it. It's excellent theory. I see it pretty often. Tell me more about it, please. Okay, well, this one's interesting. It's interesting to follow one work order and see how it travels through the system and what it actually does and the means in the end. Okay, lead us through the journey. Let's let's let, let's go to the journey. Okay, so we'll start with the lube manager or anyone responsible for lubrication. They'll prepare the strategy, make a decision, and as a result, they make a lubrication plan. It's usually time-based. Normally it makes the calculations or accept re accepts recommendations from OEMs. So as a result, he prints off a PM, work order, and so on. Okay, so that's a start. Okay, but it's not the beginning of the journey, but it's the start of a task. So in the morning, he prints off the work order, gives it to his lube technician, and he goes out in the field to do the job. Then in the afternoon, the end of the shift, he'll come back with some paper, but with all the boxes checked. That's where the check mark theory starts. And the paper goes back to the lube manager, he looks at it, sees all the boxes are checked, it's a paper in the archives, and that's it. Job done. Says who? <laughs> Says check mark. <laughs> and that is a problem. That's the interesting part. What does a check mark prove? That the lube tech actually visited the bearing? Maybe, but not necessarily. Does it prove the correct grease with the correct grease gun was applied? No, it does prove that. Does it prove that the grease was needed? Absolutely not. Does it prove that the exact amount of quantity from the work order was applied? No, it's a matter of trust. So that, that sounds like a lot of maybes, honestly. Not done yet. The big question comes, does it prove that the bearing is now better? Absolutely not. And, and that is the most important question. But let's ask ourselves, what does it prove? Well, if it's a green check mark, it proves that the team uses green pencils. Seriously, it does not prove anything. That is a problem. It only serves as a purpose to create an illusion that everything is fine. It also gives an illusion that one day when someone starts asking questions about failures, this check mark will be a release from responsibility, but it won't. Check mark and the real health of the pairing have nothing to do with each other. So check mark theory is based on illusion, smoke and mirrors. Exactly. Imagine the responsibility that lube manager has and imagine the entire responsibility being covered with a check mark. That's scary. Okay, I agree. Now you tell me, how do we deal with that? Simple. Bring the proof. Instead of a check mark, a measurement. That proves all that needs to be proven. Did the bearing need grease? How much? Is it better now? Proof, not hope. Your Honor, I rest my case. So it's going to be another espresso for the next topic? <laughs> Lubrication is dangerous for the blood presser. I vote for a macchiato. Okay, macchiato it is on Monday. See you on Monday, my friend. All right, until next time.